All right, so the Spain women's soccer football team uh, won the Women's World Cup, and now the head of the Spanish Football Federation, his name is Luis Rubiales, has uh, found himself in a huge controversy that is not going away anytime soon. You'll know why after we play this next video. Dar de este maravilloso deporte, dedicándole ese título de campeona de este planeta. Dar de este maravilloso deporte, dedicándole ese título. De campeona de este planet. You can see him kissing one of the soccer players there on the lips. Uh, so that's a midfielder, Jennifer Hermoso. We can put the next tear sheet up on the screen. This is from CNN. Now, Rubiale said he made a mistake, but he said the kiss was consensual. The woman says she did not give her permission and felt violated. Fortunately for her, it's on camera and does not seem to be consensual at I mean, all. He's got both his hands on the back of her head. What, what kind of like. He's going down the line in the video and doing this to all of the, the women. He's doing it uh, after they win the World Cup. So he knows the eyes of the world literally are on him at World Cup. There's cameras everywhere. He clearly thinks that he's not doing anything wrong in the moment. He does say that he made a mistake. Now we can put the next element up on the screen here. His mom is on a hunger strike as calls have mounted for his resignation. He's kind of making the defense that like, listen, I made a mistake, but is it as bad as, it, as you're saying? it is that I should actually resign. Uh, that's his defense. Ryan, you were recently in Spain mm -hmm. <laughs> as a tourist to Spain. I was. Uh, what do you make of this? I mean, he's trying to ride the backlash uh, to the, mm -hmm. the global backlash to the Me Too movement uh, and say that, you know, it's a witch hunt and, that, you know, this, I guess he's doing the boys will be boys uh, type of thing. It, I'm, I'm trying to imagine in my mind if the, the men's uh, Spanish team won the World Cup, him going down the line and planting big wet kisses on all the men. Uh, I suppose it's remotely within the, no, it's not, I can't, I, there's, I just can't get myself to imagine it. Like this yeah. is clearly uh, gendered, it, uh, it's gross. It's like, dude, like, all, I mean, what are you doing? Um, and also this like entitlement to the job, it's like, you, you had you had a job that paid really well that that put you at the top of this position, and now everybody wants you out of it. Mm -hmm. So go, <laughs> like that's just go it. Go quietly. Yes, yeah, just go. Like you, if if you want to, uh, you know, keep the trust of the people that you're uh, in charge of in this job. Like you got to behave better, and you have to win their trust. And you didn't. You lost it. So go. I think that's a good point that he's lost the trust of people. Now, he gave the speech that CNN accurately characterizes as defiant. If you go watch it, defiant is really the right word for it, where he says... Um, <laughs> it's in a room full of like hooting dudes, too. He says, yeah, he, he, saw, he called the kiss, quote, spontaneous, mutual, euphoric, and with consent. Spontaneous, mutual, euphoric, and with consent. Hell of a self-defense there. Uh, and he says he's going to, quote, fight to the end. As we mentioned earlier, his mom feels so strongly about this that she's on a hunger strike. And I don't want to actually minimize that because there are men who feel like they are bearing the, the brunt of the sort of collective uh, reconsideration of sexual norms, uh, post-sexual revolution, and you know, women, mothers have to watch their sons in some cases be unfairly maligned and smeared um, for offenses that are you know maybe more more minor than the media scandal, you know, that, that may indeed be wrong, but are sort of more minor than the media scandal makes them out to be. This video I think is really interesting because. Um, women like get stuff like this more common than I think people more commonly than people realize, and, and it's and from our current president of the United States. Yes, from our, exactly as conservatives lament and criticize him for, and it is uncomfortable. And so the fact that it played out in front of the world, I think, should be a lesson maybe to to uh, men who grew up in a different era when uh, this was probably still uncomfortable for women. Although those women um, were you know just like incredible generations of women who put up with the this, uh, and you know, called it out, but put up with it, and then you know, sort of put on a brave face. And it's not to say that they should have to, but it is to say that you know, it's it, is this the same thing as a sexual assault? I don't think so. But is it you know also uncomfortable and something men shouldn't be doing? Yes. So the question of whether it rises to a resignation-worthy offense, I think Ryan comes to the point where it's like, well, you're the head of the federation, and everyone's like, dude, you blew it. Yeah. 
step down. Yeah, and w one thing that uh, I think is important to remember about the consequences throughout the kind of Me Too movement is that a lot of it correlated with how much goodwill people had built up mm. kind of previously. Like if you look back at the cases of people who survived kind of survived it. scandals and people who didn't survive scandals, uh, in, in almost every case it correlates with how much of a jerk you were mm -hmm. to people. And that, and then that corresponded to how much kind of benefit of the doubt you gave somebody in a, in a murky situation. Mm. And if nobody's giving you any benefit of the doubt and then you, uh, throw your hands on the back of this woman's head, uh, kiss her in front of the entire world on the lips. She says she hated it. People are, and and you've been a jerk to people and particularly to women over yeah. the years. Then people are gonna be like, yeah, I'm with her, like because I because I believe it. Mm -hmm. Whereas with with other people who survived, uh, you know, a allegations, they'd say, hmm. I know, you know, th that's not who this person is. Yeah. And, and, it, and, and they, let's say, they, even if they believe the allegation, like, let's say they made a mistake. And yeah. So they, they end up coming through it in the end. Um, and so th what the reaction from so many people who know him so well tells me, yeah. even though I have no evidence, I don't know, never heard of the guy before, is that, you know, he didn't have a whole lot of goodwill going into this. Right. Yeah, that, I, I would. I'd go out on a limb and say that that's probably the case. <laughs> and you can tell from the women's body language, like they kind of lock up. Some of them do when you. And, yeah. and by the way, like mm -hmm. some women don't mind this, and like probably, you know, like are, are willing to just like go along, get along. But like they're also in this case, it's not just something that happened with like a friend at a party. It's their professional implications. Uh, he has power over this woman, so it, 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 she's got the eyes of the world on her. She knows that she's got rows of cameras behind her, and gets sort of grabbed by this guy who has some power over her on on national TV. She can't do what a lot of women would do, or she probably feels less able to do what a lot of women would do. Just push him back and be like, "Hey, man, cut it out," um, or even playfully to do that. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want to do that to someone who has power over you. There's no incentive to do that to someone who has power over you, even though the world probably would have rallied behind her. That's not what your uh, brain is telling you in the moment when, you know, your ability to continue on this team, doing what you love, making money, uh, you know, providing for yourself and potentially your family is on the line uh, because you could be embarrassing this dude who has power over you on TV. Uh, there's no incentive to do that. So it's, it's not just like a, a typical social thing either. It's like, it's a pretty inappropriate thing to do. Yeah. And, and don't be a jerk. And nobody has mentioned the Cuomo defense where he's like, it's just a, I'm Italian. Like nobody is <laughs> like, hey, I'm just Spanish. You know, I'm Spanish. Yeah. yeah. Like what's the what's the big deal? <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't realize Ryan that you uh, were not an avid uh, football fan. No. Uh, no, not really. Yeah, that's why we have, the, we have we both have baseballs behind us. If people haven't mentioned, we both when when Sagar and Crystal were telling us what to stock on the shelves, both of us independently yeah, without. <laughs> I, pl I played soccer in high baseball. school. Never really liked it that much. I, I love soccer. I did solve the Catalan independence uh, issue when I was in Spain. Really? I did. Do they know no. that? Do the Catalans I, they, know they, that? They, they don't know it yet. Here, I'll tell you how I solved it. Okay. Also, this is an incredible story. Yes. And we're over eight minutes, but I'll tell it anyway. We don't care. So the, Sp <laughs> the Spanish, uh, so the Spanish elections, like a month ago or whatever, everybody right. expected the right wing was going to win. They fell just short, forty-eight percent or something like that. So they don't have enough to take power, so they need to form a coalition. Back in 2017, you remember this? The, the, Cat, the Catalan kind of independence movement held its own referendum where they were gonna have a vote and then they were gonna just gonna declare independence. Mm -hmm. Catalan is Barcelona, it's the kind of Mediterranean area and the area around there. And it was illegal. Mm -hmm. And the police came in, uh, beat up a bunch of people, arrested most of the leadership of the Catalan independence movement. And the head of that movement escaped, they didn't, ca like he was going from like safe house to safe house, got across the border into France, and he's now in Switzerland. Mm. He's been in exile uh, for the last six years. The, the right has 48%, the left's got le less than 50%. The Catalan Independence Party is now the kingmaker. <laughs> and so whoever they form a coalition with becomes the government in Spain. Mm -hmm. So who are they negotiating with? Mm -hmm. The fugitive in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. You could not write a better story than this. Mm -hmm. So he is currently negotiating with both sides. And he's trying to get a, a legal vote, mm -hmm. legal referendum, and then other things that the Catalan independence crowd wants. 
here's how you solve the problem. Here's how you solve this. You drive around Europe, there's no borders. <laughs> Just how you like it. No borders. <laughs> Everybody uses the euro. I mean, there's EU borders. Right. I mean, if you drive into the sea, yeah. well, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get into a border. But at, but it's like, what do you mean you want independence? Like, you're still going to use the euro. You're still going to be within the EU. What they really mean is they want their language to be respected, their culture, and they don't want to subsidize what they think of as all these lazy Spaniards. Like, they hate that they that they are the kind of economic engine of Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, and that they, you know, the same way that New York hates that they have to subsidize Ohio or whatever. <laughs> and so what you can do is say, all right, fine. You don't have to pay anything to Spain. You can have your independence, but whatever the current tax revenue structure is, you gotta pay that to the EU. <laughs> and then the EU is gonna kick it back to Spain. Mm -hmm. and, that, and then you have your independence, get your own country, your own flag, your own language, all that stuff. And I think that they would reject it. Yes. And <laughs> that, which shows they don't really want it. Like they, if, if, if you're not willing to like pay a little bit higher taxes to have independence, then you don't actually want it. And you're just play acting, like pretending that you want it. And I, I'm certain the Catalan Independence Party doesn't want it because then what are they? <laughs> no like they're nobodies <laughs> at that point because they're actually a pretty conservative. Well, they become uh, Catalan nationalists. They're a pretty conservative party, but the Catalans themselves are pretty progressive. And so the only reason that they win votes in, in Catalan is because they support independence. Uneasy alliance. Right. And so as soon as they have independence, they're no longer going to support this like uh, right wing Catholic party anymore. They're going to support a progressive. I party. love to think sometimes that Sager and Crystal are like, let's check in on counterpoints. <laughs> they click on a segment about Spanish soccer <laughs> and they tune into Ryan solving the problem of nothing, Catalan independence. No, nothing more American than like driving into Spain for a couple of days. <laughs> Having some coming away with the solution. Solving the Catalan independence crisis. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, stay tuned because if Ryan does indeed turn out to have solved this problem, uh, we'll, we'll surely bring it up. But that they can't to... because these are cynical people who don't actually want to solve the problem. <laughs> so. well, well, either way, regardless, we'll, we'll keep you updated on the situation well, if, as, as Ryan's negotiations proceed. Hey, if you liked that video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Breaking Points. If you want to see the rest of CounterPoints, go to breakingpoints.com to become a premium member and get the full uncut show every morning in your inbox and on Spotify. Help us build independent news and get the full show every morning at breakingpoints.com.